Hello and welcome to the Kerbal Space Program tutorial series. Uh, this is your host Scott X125 Productions, and I welcome you all to my channel. Okay, so uh, tutorial one: space planes and avionics. So first of all what you want to do is go into the space plane hangar and you're going to see three types of cockpit which you'll be able to use for space planes. So first you have the Mark 1 cockpit. This is basically a fighter type cockpit which has the least actually no. I'd say it's more of for small jet type planes. Uh, the second cockpit, the Mark II cockpit, is uh, like a, a medium sized uh, aeroplane cockpit. It's sort of the medium in between the Mark III and the Mark I. And the final cockpit, the Mark III, uh, is the largest of the three. It can withstand the most impact it has the largest crew capacity and interestingly enough the mass is actually the same as the second one which is interesting but nevertheless we'll go with the Mark II cockpit right so now that we're in the build menu what you want to do is to decide the balance of your aircraft. Now, for realistic purposes, I'm going to be using the Mark I fuselage, fuselage jet fuel in con contents to the fuel tank because even though these are compatible with the engines, it would seem unrealistic and pretty stupid to be wasting your time using those. So, what you want to do is to primarily build the back of your aircraft. And as you can see, this would imbalance the aircraft by about 3.6. So, what you need to remember is you've got a 3.6 weight on the rear now you have to balance that with something on the front so what I normally do is I plunk a fuel tank on the front and I probably would have an NCS adapter and an avionics package. Now this is basically a smaller and similar version to the uh, SAS module to help with flight. Right, now what we need to do is we need to add the engine. So now you have your two types of basic engine. You have the jet engine and the turbo jet engine. Now, personally, I would use turbo jet engine primarily because its rate in the lower atmosphere is a little bit less than the basic jet engine, but normally it'll be much more well worth it if you climb to a higher atmosphere and it also has a small uh, control system on the rear of it which allows for more fine tuning of direction so we'll go with that for now okay now what we need to do is to build the wings and okay so let's build the wings so first off what you want to do is start off with the rear. Now normally for small planes like this I would do 
Uh, yeah, let's do one wing connector like that, and then a delta wing because this on its own would provide quite a lot of lift. And then for the front, we'll put some canards. Now these are very important, you will want these on every aircraft. These are basically like the frontal control ailerons, so make sure you always have canards. Okay, now for some small control surfaces, these are your rear ailerons, don't put these on the front. Uh, you need a tail fin. Now, what you can do with tail fins is if you have them vertical like this, that basically streamlines the jet to run straight in the direction you're going. Or, what you can do is you can place them like this, and that basically lowers the centre of gravity in the rear. Now, that'll make the rear more sort of balance so it hot it <sighs> what's a good way to explain this basically it will be like a cradle the jet will always want to fall back to this position if you get that I don't know you'll see it when we're in game so I normally do this on my uh, jet designs uh, let's see In fact, I'm going to remove. Uh, mm, no, I'll leave this. What I was thinking about there, guys, is normally when you're coming for landing, you'd want the front gear to be slightly lower than the back gear and you you want the back gear pretty spaced out so that you don't have a a low surface area of contact with the ground because that could flip your jet over and any movement would just crash you it's like you'd have uh, probably two fuel cells there with probably you know with some wheels on it like that and that would give you a a good surface area but for now we're just going to do things cheaply so let's see what could we use you could use a structural pylon uh, I think we're going to go with some hard points. Just make sure they're straight. Yep. Okay. Now, in fact, you'd want to move these back a bit so that when you land, you don't hit the engine off anything uh, that looks good okay in fact that looks a bit sideways That looks good. Just for some extra strength, we're going to stick some structural pylons on. And that's also another important thing. Normally, with uh, my aircraft, 
I put pylons to the outer parts of the wings so that when you get the lift from the engine it doesn't rip the wings off and it also keeps them more stable during turning or basically any stunts okay and the front wheel There we go. That's looking good to me. Right. Uh, just a few extra things that you might want to put on your aircraft. A ladder. They're useful. The odd. These are specifically made for aircraft. Um. It's also good to have a parachute, uh, basically to have a few around, so that if anything bad does happen, your little kerbals will be home for supper. So we'll put that up there. Right. It looks good to me. Okay, let's give it a run. wait for the physics to load up now just so you guys have a pleasant time I'll turn the volume down slightly Sorry about that guys, uh, KSP had a little bit of a uh, error. Anyway, let's get started. So, what you want to do on takeoff is to enable the SAS. This will keep your jet relatively stable. Another thing I also found useful is just before taking off you want to pitch up. This will keep your plane from veering left or right on the runway as much. There we go. Successful launch. So let's climb to a few thousand feet and then return home for landing. Now another pointer is that you can use the caps lock button which will give you a fine-tuned control of your S, A, D and W keys which will allow more precise movements and you can also uh, hold ALT next to the spacebar and select any key so if you for example select S You will see the pitch bar slowly moving up in correspondence to the gimbal. Now what that means is that you're setting the trim to make the ailerons pitch up 
and this is kind of like for say an autopilot so this is useful if you just want to leave your jet running at a certain altitude and it will just keep flying in that direction for a while until of course your jet starts to lose fuel which it obviously is and what that means is that the gravitational balance of your jet is going to be changing constantly now that's not necessarily a good thing because the balance of your craft is going to be all over the place and so you're going to have to constantly keep adjusting the trim or you can just fly it manually Another handy tip is to control the flow of fuel in your aircraft. What you can do is right click on the fuel cell and disable the flow. What all that what that will do is it will enable each cell to have fuel drawn from it either equally or periodically. So you could say empty this fuel tank and it would probably still be balanced then empty that one and then empty the front one okay so let's turn around and head back to base now when turning with jets you want to make sure that you don't go too quickly because sometimes bad things can happen as I do not want to demonstrate right now so we'll keep heading around like this and we'll drop the thrust to about two thirds Now I don't recommend you do this and take SAS off, but if you want to really turn quickly it could help you, but evidently in this case not. So we'll just keep turning as normal. Put the throttle back up. Come on. Gosh, this plane's not having it. This is one of the disadvantages of using SAS. Is that. It's that. Oh, God. Oh. God, no! It's like you turn extremely slowly, but in cases like that, it can save your life. So there's always pros and cons to having SAS on all the time. You want to drop the fuel. A thrust down. And begin to head back to base. Okay now, a handy uh, thing to do is to place markers. So as you can see, mine's pretty messed up, but I can clearly see where the Kerbal Command Center is, over there. But if you're new and you don't have any clutter around your Command Center, what you can do is, at the end of the runway, get like um, probably a plane or say a lander type craft from the rocket pad and you can just hover it over and crash it or land it just at the end of the runway so you can easily tell that there's well the runway's there 
because it can be pretty hard to see. Let's just get that to... There we go. And as you can see, from what I said earlier, these uh, tail fins in the formation that they are in is keeping my jet fairly stable. The problem with this is, with all tail fins, it restricts the movement left and right and tends to make your plane roll more. It would also roll without them, so it doesn't really make any difference. Okay, so there's the KSP Center. And if you check the map, it should be just coming off coast. Yep. Okay, so now I know uh, which debris is my landing signal so I'd say it's about there and there's a the runway so what we need to do is to remove the trim thrust down a bit to about 40% 50% Okay, now we're coming in a bit fast, but that's okay, because there's quite a lot of runway, so we should be alright. Now normally I'll turn SAS off for landings, but I'll keep it on. Okay, you want to throttle down to one third. But never turn the throttle, up, throttle off because sometimes the aircraft becomes unstable when you start thrusting forward and that can tip your aircraft right over and you'd crash into the ground. Okay, we're coming in for a final approach. Oh, and there we go. Well, that was a bit of a touch and go landing, but we made it. It was a bit of a lag spike just before we hit the ground, so that was a good recovery. And... get our curve out on the wrong side of course oh, he's all right he's invincible oh. this is Harvested Kerman signing out hey wait <laughs> <laughs>